Can you tell us about yourself and the work you do? Sure. Uh, my name is Nitin. I currently serve as Director of Financial Sciences and Digital Assets at IBM. I founded Blockchain Labs in 2012 uh, and then realized that the element of digital asset was missing. So I founded Digital Asset Labs in 2017 and then did all the work around stable coins and central bank digital currencies and, and sort of getting the notion of digital asset in the entire ecosystem and not just treating blockchain as a database. So it's been a, a good 10-year journey in this space and seen the industry evolve and it's never a dull moment as, as we say it. That's nice to know. So blockchain-based technologies like Web3, the highly controversial cryptocurrency and NFTs, uh, it's all a bit of a jumble. Can you take us through why you're bullish on these? Absolutely. So uh, I think there is a central theme to all the things that you mentioned, which is primarily around Web3.0, which is trying to decentralize the way we consume information and moving from a consumptive and, and you know, model to a much more ownership model, which is ability for us to own our data, ability for us to be able to own our interaction with other peers and participants and able to monetize it, which is not what's happening today because evolution of tech has enabled and empowered decentralized platforms to take advantage of it. I think it's time to change and shift some of those elements. But the central theme to Web3.0 cryptocurrencies and all the elements that we talk about in the blockchain space is essentially around transfer of value. So what internet has done so far is allowed us to disseminate information efficiently across the globe and take advantage of that information dissemination. And I think that uh, it's time for now ability for us to move internet of value. And we have been using this uh, network of information to move value, which is, was never designed for it. So all this thing to me is distilled down to ability for us to move value around the globe with the same ease as you would send an email so to speak. So that's, that's why I'm bullish about it, because that fundamentally changes financial systems, that fundamentally changes social networks, that fundamentally changes the e-commerce models that have been evolving in the past, I would say, three decades. That's taken advantage of this information system. Wow, so we're all on ground zero. Tell us about some of the blockchain-based tech implementations that you're really excited about. Yeah, some of them are super exciting. Of course, there is the foundational Bitcoin and, and digital asset space. I find decentralized financing as an application space super exciting because it's not only fueling the technical innovation behind it, but it's also fueling the new product innovation that comes with it. So you have, again, a confluence of, of economists and, and technologists and bankers and financiers coming together to create new product. And whenever you have new product, you have new markets, you have new synergies, you have new e economies that get created, which is the exciting part of the whole thing. But of course, there's a ground reality of all the stuff that has to happen in the background. Uh, so I'm excited about that. I'm excited about Web3.0, which is, again, redefining the way we value things. Uh, and again, while metaverse may be a topic of, or you know, a flavor of topic these days, I think that metaverse is much bigger than just a virtual world that we live in. So these are super exciting elements and ability for us to be able to move value between these ecosystems is what is exciting about this whole space, I think. Very interesting. To take that further, can you give us an example of some of the more pressing challenges that prevent these technologies from becoming mainstream? Um, technological, sociopolitical, or anything otherwise? I think the biggest issue is talent. Having enough skilled people to, that includes technical, that includes, and the only hope I have of the newer generation, which is the younger generation, is again, they can fulfill that talent gap. Second thing I think is the resilient infrastructure, uh, which is ability for us to build, we are building a truly global system. It took us, it took about 30 years for internet to truly be prolific enough to reach every part of the world. And if we want blockchain to reach that level of scale, we need to make some significant investment in the base infrastructure, which is the, f the physical aspect of this industry. Uh, and I think that that's one impediment, I think, which needs to be looked into. There's talent, there's technology, and one element is uh, the receptiveness from the socio-political element in the industry, where governments are not very receptive because they see it as a threat to existing political and financial systems. And I think that oftentimes uh, it could be an impediment in, in implementation and adoption of this technology. But I think over time, just like what we've seen with the internet, uh, technology knows no bounds. And sooner or later, it'll penetrate uh, despite uh, all the resistance that you would get from some of the actors. And that, to me, is the last of my worries. I'm focusing on actually building things that we aspire to build and make this truly global. We look forward to that. Thank you. Cool. Thanks.